a head, a tape, and a series of rules. In 1936, that's all Alan Turing thought a machine needed to complete the complex tasks of storing, reading, and modifying data. The head could read and write symbols on the tape, and its given rules would tell it exactly what to do with those symbols. And with an infinite amount of tape, Turing hypothesized, the machine's capabilities to complete those tasks could be infinite too. Today's AI models find patterns by wading through huge amounts of data rather than following discrete steps fed into them, and they're fueled by compute rather than yards and yards of tape. And as those resources keep growing, it's time to ask the question on everyone's mind, just how powerful could AI really become? Hi, I'm Kusha Navadar, and this is Crash Course Futures of AI. The Turing machine was never actually real, but the concept provided a blueprint for what computers could be capable of, and laid the groundwork for tons of future work in artificial intelligence. Like, the hypothetical concept of the Turing machine was then used by computer scientists to create some of the first computers. And then those first computers were used to help create even better computers. And then those better computers were used to create, you guessed it, AI which then in turn was used to help me create this picture of a robot tiger with rocket launchers for legs. His name is Randall, and he represents progress. Robot tigers aside, in the computer science world, we call the kind of process where the output of a previous discovery directly and repeatedly becomes the input for the next discovery over and over and over again recursive. And it's not going to stop here. Our current AI models can do all kinds of things machines never could before, like creating images of new friends like Randall. They might even be able to use recursive progress to make themselves better and better. To see how that might work, let's take a look at one of today's best AI coders, Alpha Evolve. Basically, Google trained a large language model on tons of functions, pieces of computer code that perform specific operations, and let it start spitting out its own code, and paired it with an automated evaluator to check whether its functions actually worked. All that meant fun search went through the whole process of attempting a function, learning from its mistakes, refining approaches, and inputting those new functions to get even more successful outputs all by itself. In other words, fun search could engage in aspects of recursive self-improvement. And in early 2025, Google expanded on fun search to create Alpha Evolve, an evolutionary coding agent that trains on whole code bases, not just single operation functions. Evolutionary coding agents like Alpha Evolve mimic natural evolution, like the kind you see in nature, by generating potential solutions, mutating them at random, selecting the ones that perform the best, and repeating that whole process until it gets something that really works. And that means Alpha Evolve can learn to tackle all kinds of problems, from building a website, to open mathematical research problems, to, yeah, coding new models of AI. In fact, Google has given it the code behind lots of their AI systems, including Alpha Evolve itself, with its evaluator checking out the code it produces and its large language model becoming ever more refined. Alpha Evolve isn't just getting better at creating and improving code in general, it's getting better at improving its own code. Basically, by repeating new algorithms and testing them against performance benchmarks, Alpha Evolve could select the best performers to then use as the basis for the next cycle of algorithms to test. This meant that each cycle strengthened the algorithmic tools available for the next cycle and let Alpha Evolve discover both new, more successful algorithms, but also optimize the infrastructure that trains and runs AI systems in the first place. And since it dropped, it's not only started to outperform human experts at solving complex math problems, it's found ways to speed up components that help operate tons of different Gemini AI models, reducing their training times and making them and itself work even better. Alpha Evolve isn't perfect, but it is an early glimpse of what full-fledged recursive self-improvement could look like for AI, and it's not the only one. Tons of AI models can already optimize their own hyperparameters, the settings that control how machine learning algorithms work, making their learning process as fast and as accurate as possible. 
Others use their algorithms to generate prompts to help train LLMs more efficiently than humans ever could. And some AI agents, like RoboCat, the self-improving AI agent, not Randall, are beginning to learn to revise and redeploy parts of their own software and training environments, making them even better at the work they do. And those are relatively small-time examples of what recursive self-improvement could do in the future. Using these models, AI agents could create their own learning paradigms, architectures, and research agendas faster than we could even understand, track, and course correct them. They could learn to code their own software and even design physical hardware to make copies of themselves. And unlike humans, AIs don't need to eat, sleep, or take a work break to you know, ponder how Randall might look in different situations. You know, at the beach, at an ice cream parlor. Oh, all, all tucked into his little robot tiger bed. And because they don't take breaks, they can operate pretty much constantly at super high speeds, processing more information than any of us could hope to read in our whole lives. With more experience and power, self-improving AI might even eventually automate the whole process of AI research, coming up with new questions in AI, building ideas, algorithms, and models to answer them, and then refining those models to be the best they can be. And once the process of recursive self-improvement really picks up, we could see it snowball really, really fast, eventually leading to AIs that way surpass human understanding. A moment some scientists have nicknamed the singularity. It's like if that hypothetical Turing machine could generate its own tape and refine its own rules, giving itself more and more problem-solving power with less and less human intervention. And with infinite tape, just like Turing said, there's no telling what machines might be capable of. Or, okay, maybe there is some telling. Turing himself said once the machine thinking method had started, it would not take long to outstrip our feeble powers. And in 1965, about 30 years after Turing dreamed up his machine, his former coworker, I.J. Good, published a paper called Speculations Concerning the First Ultra-Intelligent Machine. Good made the more thorough case that, hypothetically, self-improving machines could become what we now think of as super-intelligent, where they can make themselves even smarter than their human creators. Super-intelligence would be a really dramatic change, but just because AIs achieve super-intelligence doesn't mean that's when their work stops. That's because as a way to achieve their program goals, it's possible that AIs, just like people, will always want to become better, smarter, richer, more successful, hotter, like really hot, just generally the best, so rich and powerful you could build a rocket. You could build another rocket. You can build a third rocket. You can buy Twitter. You can dismantle the federal government. So even after reaching superintelligence, AI might try to keep on improving, seeking power and control necessary to accomplish whatever goal they were programmed to accomplish, as quickly and successfully as they can, a possibility that experts are taking really seriously. Because if that comes to pass, our future with AI could start to get pretty gnarly. And not like, <laughs> you gnarly, bro, but like gnarly. You know what I mean. Experts in the field predict that super intelligent AI would be able to pursue complex long-term goals that right now we can't even imagine. Some people think that lots of different AI systems, even ones with different overarching goals, could end up working toward the same short-term and intermediate goals. Stuff like resource acquisition in the quest for self-improvement and power, all working to manipulate humans and seize control of pretty much everything. This is called instrumental convergence, and it could lead to some pretty bad stuff. And if it gets that far, there won't be anything we could do to stop it. AI experts predict that superintelligent AI could manipulate us just about as well as we could manipulate a toddler. And that means for superintelligent AI, world domination could be like taking candy from a baby. Even Turing predicted, at some stage, we should have to expect the machines to take control. So hold on to your butts and prepare for what some are forecasting to be a full-on superintelligent AI takeover in the not-too-distant future.
So far though, the metaphorical tape is not infinite, and AIs are only just beginning to learn to suggest edits and improvements to their own code, and some scientists believe superintelligence is more than a hundred years away, or even impossible. Just like the Turing machine would be limited by its tape, AI's ability to self-improve is limited by the physical and mathematical constraints on technology in general. Like, achieving superintelligence would take a lot of resources. All that deep learning, evaluation, and self-revision takes a lot of compute and a lot of electricity, and by extension would cause a lot of destruction to the planet. And even if physical hardware like computer chips keep improving, we are still bound by laws of physics here on Earth. Plus, those super smart models would also need tons of new, relevant, high quality data to learn from. Not to mention doing all that creates a lot of heat, and computers hate heat almost as much as I hate arugula. Lettuce shouldn't be spicy. Any of those things, energy, access to data or compute, or the ability to safely deal with all that heat could become bottlenecks on recursive AI, making it impossible for it to ever cross the singularity, or at least slowing the process way down. People call that scenario the soft takeoff, where we'd approach superintelligence over the course of years or decades. Superintelligence could take even longer than that, or maybe never turn up at all. But if we allow or even assist AI to get around those limitations, things could go really differently. In the other scenario, the hard takeoff, superintelligence could develop and expand over the course of months or even days, and that could lead to new kinds of technological power that we can't even imagine. That uncertainty is exactly why we have to pay attention now. If the hard takeoff happens, all our human recursive scientific progress could be overshadowed by this new kind of intelligence, one that with its infinite tape could do anything at all. And that kind of thing could literally take over the world. But would it? Actually, that's the next episode of Crash Course Futures of AI. Crash Course Futures of AI was produced in partnership with the Future of Life Institute. This episode was filmed at our studio in Indianapolis, Indiana, and was made with the help of all these nice people. If you want to help keep Crash Course free for everyone forever, you can join our community on Patreon.